Hello again, everybody. I'm Matt White, and welcome to another edition of FYI, right here on the Real Estate Channel. Now, joining me in the studio today is Elizabeth McQueen. Elizabeth, welcome to the show. Thank you. You are from Remax Crest Realty West Side. Am I saying that correctly? Mouthful. Yes, you are. It's a bit of a mouthful. Welcome to the show. Let me ask you first uh, how long you've been doing the real estate thing. Since 1989. 1989? Yeah. Now, how did you first get in? Um, I was selling my own house, or I had an agent come to sell my own house, right. and he did such a horrible job <laughs> that I thought, boy, if he can do this and earn a living, I'm sure I can. Are you serious? <laughs> can you get into detail about how horrible the job was? Was it just not detail-oriented? Well, or? he was taking pictures, and I was running around trying to set the mood and, and reset the room and redo the pictures, and, and you know, he just was not helpful at all. And I thought, wow, there's, there's a lot more to this than just putting the sign in the yard. You know, this old saying, you know, it's more than just putting a sign in the yard and, and taking out an ad in the paper. Right. So I, I, I had a real desire to do a lot of um, interior design anyway. And I thought, wow, I get to go inside people's houses. I get to help them with their interior design. And uh, maybe I can earn a living at it. So. Yeah, I read somewhere that you were into the in interior design aspect. Do you still do anything along those lines anymore? Or? I help people stage. Right. Yeah, I don't, I can't take any credit for any sort of interior design. I just, you know, I have an eye. I like things a certain way and have been in the business long enough that I think um, I can share some of that experience with people on, on what not to do and what to do. It's interesting you mentioned that the, uh, your sort of nudge into the industry was uh, dealing with someone else because I've actually talked to realtors before that have said, you know, a job that a realtor did just was so bad or so non-detail oriented that it actually made them think, I could do this and do it better. So you, that, I guess, was the case for you That's as well. That's exactly what it was. Now, and I'm, I had a weird job before that. So. Oh, do tell. Oh, okay. Um, I worked for Agriculture Canada as a grain inspector. Are you serious? Hard hat, work boots, the whole bit. Wow. Yeah. What involved? <laughs> Did you inspect the grain as it goes by in a conveyor belt? Pretty or much, that? yeah. Holy yeah, mackerel, if it's yeah. no good, what? Yeah, well, lots of things to do to that. But I just figured, you know, if, um, if I can don the appropriate attire and I can make a good living at it, that's what I did. That's, yeah. That was supposed to be a part-time job that expended, uh, yeah. Now, other than grain inspection, which probably doesn't come up too uh, much in the real estate industry, and I know this is a tough question, but what would you describe as your strengths, Elizabeth? I'm a good listener, and I'm a good negotiator, and I think this business is more about trying to anticipate what people want before they know what they want. Right. And and also um, helping them um, get educated about what they really don't know they don't know. Do you deal with a lot of first-time buyers where this would be, you know, very important to get that information across? Surprisingly, it's for all types of buyers, first-time buyers, educated buyers, uh, long-time investors. The biggest mistake that I see realtors making is that they're working with somebody who's done this two or three times, and they get casual about it. Right. And when you get casual about it, you get mistakes, you have things left off of contracts, you assume things that the client knows or understands, because we do it all the time. And when they say, oh, no, I've done this before, it's really important to still sit them down and say, this is how we're going to do it this time. This might have changed from the last time that you did this. And uh, just to try and keep everybody on the same page so there's no misunderstandings. So each client buying or selling <coughs> is like a brand new experience type of thing. I think they have to be treated like that. Not to, to treat them like children, but to treat them at, with respect that let's make sure that we've covered all of the bases so that we're all on the same page. Right. Now, there's a lot of talk about, you know, the pre-Olympic market, post-Olympic market. Where do you see the market going in the next couple of years? I see the market continuing to go up. Uh, I see it going up, maybe not as quickly as it has over the last three years. Um, I think in the last three years, the condo market downtown has gone up over 89%. I think in five years, it's about 115%, and that's from the real estate board lately. Um, so it may not be going up quite as quickly as that, but I do see it continuing to be strong. We've got a lot of things in our favor because, you know, we are surrounded by water, mountains, the U.S., and we really have a very small parcel of land that we can actually build on. And so we've also got the best climate in, in Canada and probably one of the strongest economies. So we're a very desirable place to live. And once we get in front of the world with the Olympics, 
they're going to come back here and they're just going to want to participate in that themselves. So post-Olympic as well, more excitement, more building. I think so. I think a lot of people are being very short-sighted and thinking, oh, once the Olympics are here, then the prices are going to jump up. I hear that a lot. And we're going to get our rental income. I think it's way bigger than that. I think we're, it, we really have to look at the very big picture and what it's going to do two or three years out. And when I'm working with investors, I try to encourage them to look at whatever they're buying today to be a long-term investment beyond the Olympics. Right. Okay? And it's not often that you see a realtor say, no, don't sell. But I like to say, if, if you're an investor, you don't want to sell. You want to take some of that equity and buy something else. But you do want to hang on to it to get the best out of it. Now, it says on your website that, the website that you deal with a lot with a luxury real estate, luxury real estate specialist. Tell us more about that. That's the fun part of the job. That's, you know, we get to see some great properties in this city. No doubt. And, um, uh, you know, the experience there of, you know, everybody is different and they all have different expectations. And, you know, sometimes you've got people in the luxury market that have, um, you know, very small expectations, just go about and do your job and, uh, and they make it very, very simple. But the, the fun part is having the, uh, um, having a look at all the different types of property that are in the city and, and, you know, sharing that with people and they go, that's how much? That's, it's a, yeah, it's an eye opener. It, I, there's a definite cachet attached to it as well. I think. Okay. Yes. Okay. From my opinion. All right. Sure. <laughs> now you're a Yale Town resident and yes. been a Yale Town resident for some time now. How have you seen that area change over the last little while? Wow, um, it's a great place to live. I live there. I work there. I play there. It's um, it's it's all encompassing. I'm doing something right now for my accountant where I have to track my mileage on my car. And I said to him at the end of the first month, I said, I just realized how very little I actually use my vehicle compared to, you know, most people driving to work every day or even realtors driving to other parts yeah, of the city, true. you know, depending where they're living. And uh, I work everywhere. I, excuse me, I work everywhere. I walk everywhere. Right. And I work everywhere, too. <laughs> and, uh, but it's, it has really grown up. We've got some spectacular restaurants there now. Uh, it's got a real feel of community. It's and really growing all the time. Now, the people that are sitting at home watching this and would like to get in touch with you, how can they find out more about you and how can they get a hold of you? Well, there's always my website. It's www.elizabethmcqueen.net and my phone number is 604-377-4321. Elizabeth McQueen, thank you very much for coming on FYI today. My pleasure. Appreciate it.